Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about self-portraits um, and a self-portrait activity. So hopefully you will have received one of these bags, our McNay Art, McNay from Home activity kits. Um, and if you received the self-portrait activity, you'll be doing this activity today. So just a little bit about self-portraits to begin with. They don't always have to be super realistic, right? Like they don't actually always have to look exactly like the artist. Sometimes if you don't wanna make a self-portrait that looks just like you, you can do a symbolic self-portrait using um, things that maybe aren't realistic um, or you can do a symbolic self-portrait uh, literally out of symbols. So if you didn't wanna use this face as a base for yourself, you just turn the paper over and create your own self-portrait on the other side um, with no rules at all. So just a little bit to start, you should have some supplies in your bag. So what you'll need today is a glue stick, perhaps some markers. I have a pencil here because I know a lot of people are really comfortable using pencil to maybe start out your self-portrait with. And then like say you could draw an eye um, and just fix it just right until it's where you want. You could erase part of it, right? And then you could go back in later with, with marker. So um, a pencil is always a good option for starting out with. Um, I'm comfortable working in pens, so sometimes I'll just uh, draw straight onto my paper with pen. Um, you're going to have some little extra adornments here, maybe feathers that you could use as hair, uh, sequins that you could put on the eyes, little foam cutouts that you could put around yourself. Those are really up to you. Um, and then if you're doing this at home or at school, if you have a pair of scissors, you could add even more things onto your self-portrait. So if you have a pair of scissors, you could do a little bit of collage if there's any old magazines around that you're, you have permission to cut up. So you could cut out eyes. You could just cut out things that you really, this is a cool pattern that would be really cool to use, cut out for a background or use to make shapes. You could cut out words and make a poem beside your head. But yeah, the possibilities are really endless depending on what you have at your disposal or what you have at home or at school. But just to start, I will say your eyes should usually go somewhere between your ears or maybe just a little bit below where the ears start. So that's where I'm gonna put the eyes today. And they can be however far apart or close together that you want. I usually start by making a line at the top here. You can make a whole, see how I'm kind of correcting myself here. That's just so I can go back in and color it in later the way that I want it. Or you could connect your eyes all the way, right? So you could connect them with a corner there for almond shaped eyes, or you could leave them unconnected like that. You could do a little tear duct if you wanted to get fancy. It's just up to you. And then next you're gonna wanna do a nose. So you could do a line down the nose if you wanted. And then let's scoot that up a little bit for y'all. Or you could do no line at all. You could do a little half circle for a button nose. Or if you're like me, my nose is a little wider and I love it that way. So you could add a little bit of shape to your nose, right? Oh, also if you're doing a self-portrait at home, what I have here is a little mirror. So you see it's a little reflective. So you could look at yourself too. You could take a moment, look at yourself in the mirror and then draw what you see in the mirror there if you'd like. Next, you can do eyebrows. So those usually come to a point. 
somewhere towards the outside of the eye and then they come down with a tail a little bit and you could either do straight eyebrows or you could do little hairs going all the way across, right? Like I said, everything's up to you on how you make this. Your lips could be just a little line. That makes our person look kind of mad, huh? Or you could do a little Cupid's bow up top. Lips below. Something like that. If you have dimples or if you want dimples on your chin, you could do a little line for a dimple. Right? Or you could do that if you have dimples on the side of your mouth when you smile. You could do dimples on the side of your mouth. But I think the really fun part here, I have really curly hair and I love my curly hair, but I also think it would be so much fun to just take some feathers to create your hair, right? Another fun option, especially if you're doing this at home, and then you would, you would use the glue here to glue it down, um, would be to go outside and find some nature. So maybe some sticks, some fuzzy moss, and you could add elements to yourself like that, right? That'd be a lot of fun. I think I'm gonna add this little sequence here just because I think that would be really fun. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of glue. Glue that down. I'm not sure if that'll stick or not, but that's there for now. And if you wanted, you can also come down here. I really like this red color. So you could even add some clothing down here. So I think I'm gonna add a little Peter Pan collar. So I'll leave that white and then some shoulders coming down off of that. And then you can just color it in. Or if you wanted to do a pattern, you could color in a pattern. You could do your favorite type of clothing down below here. It's whatever you want. Whatever looks like you. This color is one of my favorite colors, so I think it really represents me. But I'm gonna go ahead and take these feathers away because those were just an option. But I think I'll, I'll do my head half and half. So I've got really curly wavy hair. So I'm just gonna put a wave down the side of my head like that. And then it usually comes into a curl like that. So whatever feels like you, whatever looks like you, or maybe you really want some colorful hair and you can't have colorful, colorful hair in real life, right? So I think pink would be fun. So on this other side of my head, I'm just gonna add some pink in here because I think that would be really cool. So this doesn't have to be hyper realistic. It doesn't have to look just like you. Just do your best. And then I'm going to add my real hair color back in here. And then once you've got the bare bones, done for your self-portrait, you can come back in here and use your embellishments. So maybe I don't want to use that on my eye. Maybe I could add earrings by putting little jewels there, right? What else? Maybe a flower 
on the shirt. See? I'm gonna definitely give her another eyebrow though, so she looks even. Also, if you're wanting to do an idealized self-portrait, so maybe something that doesn't look quite like you, but looks like it. Well, anytime you're doing portraits, generally people have symmetrical faces. So what that means is they're, they're somewhat symmetrical. So that means their eyes would be, be the same space apart. Their eyebrows would be the same shape and the same um, space apart. But in reality, we do have faces that are a little off. Like I think my eyes are different sizes. So I've got a larger eye on this side and then a smaller eye on this side. And that's actually pretty realistic because I, I don't think my eyes are the same size. But you can always go back in and adjust how you want to draw your eyes so that they're even. You bring them to the, a point if you have almond eyes. Or you could even do anime eyes if you wanted, if you want to do an anime version of yourself. Um, and then like I said earlier in the video, if you want to just flip the paper over, you can create whatever you want on this side. There's a little cat on the back of my mirror. If I wanted to create myself as a cat, as like a jungle cat, because I feel like that is an animal that I would really want to be if I could be an animal instead of a human, you can make yourself a jungle cat. Or one of my favorite things to do is to make a sim symbolic self-portrait out of things that you feel like represent you. So I was born um, here in Texas and my family is all from the Southwest. So something that I really like and identify with is cacti. Um, so you could draw a plant that you feel like you identify with, right? Start from there. Um, my mascot when I was in school was a unicorn. So I could add a unicorn to my self-portrait. You could just fill this page with things that you like and things that you think identify yourself. If you had to describe yourself to somebody, think of all the things that you like and that you would wanna tell people that you like, and then you could just draw them here. If you're not comfortable drawing faces, you could do an entire self-portrait. Um, and like I said, I really like to be a jungle cat, so. I could imitate this cat here a little bit. This is kind of looking like a coyote, but that's okay. That goes well with the cactus, right? This definitely looks like an angry cat, but just play around with it. Look, I'll give him a smiley face. <laughs> okay, that cat looks a little scary, but yeah, just add, here, I'll fix his face. <laughs> add whatever objects you think represent you here. Or this face shape doesn't necessarily look like everybody's face, right? So you could flip this over and create your own shape. So my face is, um, my face is a round face, I think. So you could create a round face for your template. There's kind of heart-shaped faces. So, you know, when people have widow's peaks and round out at the bottom a little bit, so you could create a heart-shaped face or you could create an oval-shaped face on the back and you just add two lines on either side and you've got a neck. So, Play around with this, have fun with it, and um, share your self-portraits with others. Share them with your family and your friends and your teachers. I hope y'all enjoy.